Barnaby Jones was a crime drama about a private eye who comes out of retirement. Barnaby Jones was a detective series that ran in the 70s with Buddy Epson as Barnaby Jones. A private eye in the latter stages of his life. Barnaby Jones is the oldest TV detective ever. Barnaby was a, um, a private detective retired and his son had taken over the business. Lee Merriweather played Barnaby's case-cracking daughter-in-law, Betty. They came together to solve the murder of his son, who was her husband. He worked with his daughter-in-law to try to figure out who brought down his son. They became such a good team and were able to thwart crime so readily that they just kept doing it. People would just give her information just because she looked so cute. Of necessity, Betty was me. I mean, as much as I could bring to my, of myself. Lee Merriweather was born on May 27, 1935 in Los Angeles. I think I was a very good girl. I've always been a good girl. Lee's family left L.A. when she was three. We moved to Phoenix, Arizona and lived there for nine years. Then to San Francisco. At 19, Lee entered the Miss San Francisco pageant. And her mother offered some unique motivation. When Lee was involved in the Miss San Francisco pageant, she was really, really nervous. So to try and calm her down, if this, this makes any sense, mom says to her, If you win this, I'm going to kill you. You know, to make me feel better. You know, if I didn't win, I'm sure. The first thing she said after winning the pageant was, my mom's going to kill me. Lee was then a surprise entry in the Miss California pageant. You grew up thinking that you were really funny looking and skinny and awkward and gawky and... Oh, I would never have entered the pageant ever, but I was entered by a, a, a fraternity in, uh, at the college. Despite her insecurity, Lee became Miss California in 1954, but personally, she suffered a huge loss. Well, her dad just died after she won Miss California, and her world collapsed. And she just didn't want to do anything. But her mom reminded her, you know, she was going to lose all her scholarships that she had gained from it if she didn't follow through. After her father's death, Lee wasn't even thinking about the Miss America pageant. Eventually, her mom convinced her that her dad would have wanted her to participate. Lee traveled to Atlantic City in 1955 for the historic Miss America pageant. 1955 was the first year that the Miss America pageant was actually broadcast on TV. It reached an audience of millions, whereas it never had before. With her acting talent and good looks, Lee won the pageant in front of a nationwide TV audience. Being the first one to be crowned on television was a big, big thing. She became a massive star overnight. Miss America is a whirlwind. You're out meeting and greeting and cutting ribbons, and so it was, it was just nonstop for her. What was it like? My, it was, well, every day, every day there was something going on. You're on the road, town to town. Not one break to go to the ladies' room. <laughs> With the title came some unwanted publicity. Joe DiMaggio is a longtime friend of the Merriweathers, and so he and Lee Merriweather went out for dinner one night. Picture was taken. Next thing you know, rumors circulate, and they're engaged and about to be married. They weren't. And Joe said, do you, do you realize how long I've known her mother, her father? The, yeah, yeah, please. She's a kid. Lee also attracted the attention of TV producers. After winning Miss America, she was invited on the Today Show as a guest. Midway through my year of touring as Miss America, the Today people called and asked me to be on as a, oh, their first on-air woman's editor. Lee's experience on television led to movies. In the mid-60s, she auditioned for the role of Catwoman in the Batman movie. I had to audition along with about two, probably 200 <laughs> very voluptuous women. She thought she had to differentiate herself somehow. When it was her time, she went in, got in the chair, curled up, and started purring. That, I guess that would make you stand out. That totally works. Julie Newmar originated the role of Catwoman on the Batman TV series, but never made it to the movie version. Some people said that she uh, wanted more money. Some people said she had a movie that she had to go and do. Now it was Lee's turn to join the ranks of the supervillains, including Riddler, Joker, and Penguin. I got Burgess Meredith, Cesar Romero, Frank Gorshin, working with those giants. It was a... a you know, such a treat. Catwoman is one of the many villains in the Batman universe, and she's one of the few that Batman has sexual tension with. Lee Merriweather is wearing this cat suit with, like, crazy headband with ears on it. It was not comfortable at all. The costume was made with um, uh, some kind of um, lurex, um, stretch but really tight. It was hot. 
It was tight, and the fighting scenes were especially hard because it was so tight and restrictive. She couldn't bend, she couldn't move, she couldn't twist, she couldn't pee. To this day, I cannot remember where the zipper is. The same year that Batman was released, Lee landed a recurring role on the time tunnel. Time tunnel was like the quantum leap of the 60s. These two scientists had developed a time machine, and they could travel to like different time periods every week for whatever reason. And Lee played a scientist trying to help two stranded scientists out there in time get back home. The time tunnel lasted only 29 episodes. Lee would land another recurring role in 1973 with the crime series Barnaby Jones. Betty Jones, Lee's character, was married to Barnaby's son who was killed. And they started working together to find his killer and it went from there. I established right off the bat that she was kind of forthright, open, nice, pleasant, and loved Barnaby. Barnaby Jones paired Lee with Buddy Ebsen, who was best known for the Beverly Hillbillies. From the minute I met him, it was immediate rapport. He was so charming. It was good times all the way, the whole time they were shooting the series. Lee called uh, working with Buddy a love fest. As the show went on, Lee's role as case cracker Betty Jones expanded. I kept trying to make her interesting. The thing about Betty Jones was she sort of had to pick up Barnaby's slack. As Buddy Epson started getting older, you know, they kind of toned down his, his TV airtime. The fact that Betty wasn't 150 years old really made her able to get on the case a little bit faster than Barnaby would. The cast would solve its last case in 1980. We all wanted it to continue. Buddy especially was disappointed because he wanted it to go as long as Beverly Hillbillies. Whatever happened to Lee Merriweather? Well, in 96, uh, Lee took on the role of, like, Ruth Martin on uh, All My Children. It's very difficult work, and if you're on the front burner, um, story-wise, uh, there's no rest. She won an Emmy. She played the character for two years, and now she plays it as a recurring role. Lee also returned to the stage. Lee Merriweather and her husband starred in a stage production of Gilligan's Island where they played the house. I've been doing nonsense at Theatre West, and I'm going to be doing it again. Lee's excited about a movie called The Ultimate Gift. It's about a trust fund baby who has to do 12 things, accomplish 12 things before they get the money. It's uh, with Abigail Breslin, uh, the little girl from Little Miss Sunshine. They're doing charity screenings, and they've raised now $20 million with these little mini premieres all over the country. After becoming Miss America more than 50 years ago, Lee says the pageant has gone through a lot of changes. Once television came in and got the hold on the pageant, the pageant lost total control. But I've said, you know, as long as they continue with the scholarships, I'll be behind them 100%, because it, it has helped so many young women.